Today I'm telling a story that I'm sure will be new for many of you. It is a story about my home country, Italy, and one of its finest products, the Aspida missile. Coming up. So, the Lockheed F 104 Starfighter is even today a machine of unrivaled beauty. It was never really loved in the United States, it was up against the F-102 or the F-106 and it also sort of overlapped with long-range air um, surface to air missiles like the Nike Hercules and the, the Nike Ajax. However, in an era when the United States were not keen to sell abroad their best creations, at least in the aerospace sector, the F-104 was selected as one of the possible uh, export planes for the United States allies. And nowhere this machine got more love than in Italy. The F-104G was embraced by the Italian Air Force as its mainstay for air defense. Hundreds of them were built upon license by Fiat Aviazione. The Italian Air Force soon started investing on it to improve its performances and to extend its capacity. One area where the plane definitely needed improvement was firepower. In 1965, Italy chose the F-104S locally produced variant as its fighter for the 70s. The first one was delivered in 1969, more than 250 were built, either uh, new planes or conversion from the F-104Gs, and they served together with the Gs for some time. Now, you may wonder why, if the previous version was the G, the follow-up version was the S and not the H. Well, S stood for Sparrow. Among the improvements, there was a new avionics suit with a new radar which actually was able to produce the continuous wave illumination to use the Sparrow. The Italian F-104 became the only one in the world capable of actually using the missile before the only weapon available was the Sidewinder. And this upgrade actually also drew the attention of Turkey which uh, acquired 40 planes uh, in the 70s. However, the Sparrow at the time had some a uh, well-known limitation and was not performing very well. So looking at what was happening in the skies over Vietnam, uh, the Italian Air Force decided to try to do something to improve the performance of the weapon. So Selenia, an Italian company that later will be amalgamated with Air Italia to create Alenia, uh, which had already built more than a thousand Sparrows on license, actually came up with a proposal. So in unashamedly typical Italian way, they actually started taking the Sparrow, swooping components in and out, and at the end of this process, the Aspida Mark I was born. Since its first introduction on the market, the missile was regarded abroad as a version of the Sparrow, but to be fair, it was a completely new missile. In fact, the aerodynamic configurations and the size and the weight were pretty much the same as the Sparrow because they had to maintain the compatibility with the launchers, but what was inside was basically completely new. The new weapon actually weighted a bit more than the original Sparrow, around 220 kilos, and part of this weight increase was due to the adoption of a very sophisticated, mop for the time, monopulse seeker in working in I-band. The Aspide was among the first weapons in the world to use this kind of seeker. We have talked about this technology in a previous video, so you may refer to it if you want more details. For now, it's enough to say that the accuracy was much improved, the jamming resistance was much improved as well, also, the new missile had finally a look-down, shutdown capacity. And, for good measure, a secondary home on jam guidance mode was also included. A key improvement was the use of four independent wings rather than coupled wings. This was providing the missile a higher lateral acceleration and a much higher maneuverability compared with the Sparrow. The autopilot commanding the surfaces was more sophisticated, but was also simpler, had fewer components than the original, 
and it was more reliable at some point the British that were developing the sky flash during the same period wanted to acquire the whole block because it was considered an excellent solution. The warhead was also replaced by one developed in house too. The original warhead was a continuous rod warhead which was very effective but he had the problem of not always hitting the target even though it exploded near, near it. So it was replaced one of those typically Italian fragmentation warhead that actually spray the fragments in a surface which is orthogonal uh, 90 degrees with the uh, flight path and this increases the uh, probability of hitting the target. Also the engines were replaced. It was replaced with a Snea Viscosa unit. It was supposed to burn for about 3.5 seconds and it at least at high altitude was able to propel the missile up to Mach 4. The range obviously as we have already seen depends on a lot of factors but it is commonly accepted that a practical range was about 40 kilometers which was well beyond the visual range. A great improvement at the time. Uh, the first launch happened in 1974 and the missile was ready for production in 1978. But at this point, Destiny played a trick because the F-104S actually needed to be equipped with a new radar. Well, it needed to be a monopulse radar for uh, the guidance, but also it needed to have an adequate range to be able to use the extended range of the missile. Now, the integration with the platform turned out to be so complicated that we had to wait the F-104 ASA version. The F-104 ASA was introduced in 1986 with a new radar produced in Italy by FIER that was actually able to use the Aspide at its max. The F-104 ASA and the Aspide will remain in service till 2004 when the Italian Air Force was in the middle of what later uh, was called the crossing of the desert, that is the time between the F-104 and the Eurofighter that was filled with by interim planes. So while the Italian Air Force was dragging its feet with F-16s and Tornado ADVs, uh, an active radar homing version was proposed but it was never built because at the time the Eurofighter was coming, the Eurofighter was uh, designed for the AMRAAM and so it was thought that it was not economical to have um, a domestic built version of a foreign weapon. Okay, you may think at this point, why did you do a video about a relatively obscure derivative of the Sparrow just because it was Italian? Well, I didn't do that because it was Italian. The story has actually just started. Before going on, the most attentive among you may have noticed that I said that production was starting in 1978, but the Italian Air Force didn't adopt the missile till 1986. So what happened in the meanwhile? Well, actually there were a lot of users, but they just didn't fly planes. The ground and sea launch versions were a huge, huge success. The missile was sold to 21 countries and thousands and thousands of units have been produced. Obviously the main user is Italy, but for example today uh, Pakistan and Kuwait still have the missile in service and they had the, well, not really viable possibility to use it in actual combat. However, there is another twist of the story that may bring very modern planes like the F-35 or the F-22 up against the grandchildren of the Aspide. In the early 80s, China was just starting to show the signs of its modern growth. Their air force was stuck with Soviet replicas and this was true also for air-to-air -air missiles. So, in a typically Chinese fashion, they were looking to acquire technology to improve their weapons. In this context, they struck a deal with Alenia and they acquired 200 missiles and also the license to build the missiles in China. 
However, the facts of 1989 actually jeopardized the sale and the machinery required for the production was never delivered. And that indeed was not a problem because the Chinese did what they used to do very well at the time. They reverse engineered the Aspida and they gave birth to a family of missiles which were either copies or improvements or they were actually inspired to the Italian missile. So the PL-11 was basically a copy of the original one. The PL-10 contained indigenous Chinese technology but was also largely inspired by the Aspida. And it wasn't only air-to-air -air missiles, even surface-to-air weapons like the LY-60, the LD-60 were derivatives from the Aspida and there were some very interesting uh, developments like combining uh, Soviet seekers, ex-Soviet seekers with the uh, Italian weapons or local engines with the Italian electronics, the Italian derivative electronics, and so on. The most modern derivatives uh, are still in service with the Chinese uh, forces, and they sport an unmistakable family feeling with their ancestor. If, let's hope not, hostilities should break out between the West and China, the most modern planes of the West could face the derivatives and the grandchildren of a relatively obscure Italian weapon. But this is not the end. There is a final twist to this story. The Chinese LY-60 has been sold to Pakistan to equip six frigates of the Pakistan Navy. In the same country, the Italian-made Aspide 2000 serves in the air defense role for the ground forces. So there is at least one occurrence where the rather young looking Italian grandpa is serving side by side to his Chinese grandchildren. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.